Following the fall of the Third Reich, a number of German war criminals fled Europe, evading justice and retribution from the victors. Some laid low, some continued their work, whilst some even went on to work for the Allied powers in the new fight against communism. No person encapsulates the fate of such Nazis better than Klaus Barbie, otherwise known as the Butcher of Leon. After the war, Barbie continued to offer his brutal services to some of the most dangerous and violent regimes and drug barons. In today's video, we will cover the actions of Barbie as part of the Nazi state, his myriad of work after the war, and how he was eventually brought to justice some 40 years after the war. Klaus Barbie was born on the 25th of October in 1913 in Godesberg. His family were from the Saarland region, a disputed region on the border between France and Germany. Like many boys of the time, Barbie grew up with a father who had experienced the horrors of the First World War. His father returned from the war embittered, wounded, and bearing a strong hatred for the French. The young Klaus would experience violence from his father, but apart from this, his childhood was rather uneventful. In 1933, Barbie lost both his brother and his father, leaving him and his mother potentially destitute. Unable to attend university as planned, he was instead drafted into the RAD. The RAD was the Nazi state's replacement for the Weimar Republic's voluntary work scheme, designed to offer unemployed men meaningful work. Often this work involved constructing infrastructure projects. The key difference was that the RAD also placed great emphasis on incorporating Nazi propaganda and militarism into the work. It would be two years later that Barbie would join the SS as part of the Sicherheitsdienst, which was the Nazi intelligence service. The key role of the Sicherheitsdienst was the removal of any opposition to the Nazi state, primarily through intelligence gathering and surveillance. Following the occupation of much of Europe, Barbie was sent to the Netherlands in May of 1940. He was part of the Section for Jewish Affairs, stationed in The Hague. His role involved obtaining details of Jews living in the Netherlands, who would in turn be rounded up. In one infamous instance, Barbie was able to convince the Jewish Council of the Netherlands that the Nazis were reopening a Jewish-run training village. Barbie assured the Council that the German trucks that were arriving were to be transporting the young men to the facility. Instead, hundreds of young Jewish men were arrested, ultimately ending up at the Mauthausen concentration camp. During his time in the Netherlands, Barbie rose to the rank of SS Obersturmführer and received the Iron Cross Second Class. But in November of 1942, Barbie was appointed to the role in which he would earn his grim moniker, head of the Gestapo for the Lyon region of France. Barbie set up his headquarters at the Hotel Terminus, and it was within this building that he would personally torture countless people. In particular, Barbie was charged with obtaining information from members of the French Resistance. He would torture not only adults, but also children, including 13-year-old Simone Lagrange. Lagrange was arrested along with her parents in 1944, and the three of them faced Barbie. He asked them for details on the whereabouts of Simone's younger siblings. When the information was withheld, Simone was beaten, and to use her own words, he smashed my face in. The beatings lasted for seven days. Later that month, Simone and her mother went fire train to the Auschwitz death camp. Simone's mother was gassed on arrival. Later, Simone was sent on a death march to the Ravensbrück concentration camp. It was during this march that she happened to see her father in another group of prisoners, having not seen him for months. According to her testimony, Simone was told by a Nazi officer to embrace her father, but before they could reach one another, her father was shot in the head. Barbie would use all manner of torture devices and implements. Submerging people in baths full of ice water, strapado hangings, and brutal tools all used to attempt to extract information. Those who encountered Barbie commented on his knife-like smile and the way he would prowl like a savage beast. It would seem that to all accounts, Barbie took great pleasure in his work. It is thought that Barbie is responsible for the deaths of some 14,000 men, women and children, 
those who he rounded up and deported to the Nazi concentration camps. But in April of 1944, Barbie committed arguably his most disturbing action of the war. He was responsible for the rounding up of 44 orphaned Jewish children from the ages of 4 to 17 years old. The Mason de Zoo was established in April of 1943 to offer refuge for children from all over Europe. Many of the children had been moved multiple times to avoid being captured by the Nazis. But in April of 1944, following a tip from an informant, Barbie led two trucks to the orphanage to forcibly remove the children from their carers. The children and staff were thrown into the back of the trucks and were sent to Auschwitz. Only one of the carriers sent to Auschwitz survived, with all of the children gassed on arrival. As the Allied forces made their way into France, Barbie left Lyon in August of 1944. However, before he fled, he organised one last deportation, dooming hundreds of people to the death camps. He returned to Germany, where he fought until the end of the war. Barbie was listed as a wanted war criminal by the French government. Whilst he was detained a number of times, his identity was not confirmed, and he was able to evade justice. Barbie then took up a new name, burned off his SS identification tattoo, and stayed in Germany in hopes of working with other Nazis to regain power. However, in 1947, Barbie was uncovered by an American counterintelligence officer. However, instead of arresting him, the officer offered Barbie a role as an informant. Between 1947 and 1951, Barbie would provide the American intelligence on French, Soviet and anti-communist activities in the United States zone of Germany. When the French learned of Barbie's employment, they demanded his extradition to face justice, having already tried and sentenced him in absentia. Rather than hand him over to the French and expose their activities, the American intelligence service arranged for Barbie to escape via rat lines. There were a series of escape routes from Europe, usually to South America, created for wanted war criminals. Fake documents and travel were arranged for wanted Nazis. From Italy, Barbie made his way to Bolivia and established himself with the Bolivian authorities. He was now going by the name of Klaus Altman, having found a role in the Bolivian Department of the Interior as a lieutenant colonel. He primarily worked as an instructor for the Bolivian security forces. He taught his torture methods, how to uncover resistance fighters, and how to make such people disappear. Very often, it was communists, journalists, or all manner of freedom fighters that would be on the receiving end of such treatment. Barbie developed close relationships with Bolivia's drug producers, supplying them with weapons. In the 1970s, Barbie met with members of the Medellin cartel, including Pablo Escobar, to ensure the unprocessed product reached the Colombian processing plants safely. Such work continued to fund Barbie's anti-communist work in South America. Barbie worked with all manner of other Nazis who had fled Europe after the war, with the local drug barons and future Bolivian dictators. In fact, Barbie worked with all three types of people in the coup of General Louis Tejea. This coup was named the Cocaine Coup, as the takeover was funded in large part by cocaine producers. Barbie established his own terrorist group called the Fiancés of Death, who worked to murder the rival drug lords. By all accounts, Barbie remained an ardent Nazi. In the early 1970s, however, Barbie was identified as living in Bolivia. This was discovered by the Nazi hunter couple Sergei and B.T. Klaasfeld. They had uncovered his fake name and began the process of bringing him to justice. Barbie was placed into protective custody by the Banza Suarez regime, who refused to extradite him to France. It wasn't until the early 1980s that a less autocratic government took power in Bolivia. As a result, on the 19th of January 1983, Barbie was arrested and extradited to France. His arrival caused quite the stir. The butcher of Lyon returning to France to face justice some 40 years later. Interviews with survivors to his tortures were shown on TV. One woman, who was a survivor to the Nazi death camps, even brought a rifle to the airport where Barbie would arrive, but she was arrested before she could take a shot. Throughout the process, Barbie insisted he was in fact Klaus Altman 
and that he had nothing to do with the charges leveled against him. As the statute of limitations had passed on his crimes, the prosecutors opted to level charges that did not have such a time limit. Barbie was charged with 41 counts of crimes against humanity, as defined by Article 6C of the Statute of the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg. Barbie's defense lawyer instead stated that France had committed crimes in Algeria, and so too had Israel against Palestine. They stated that these crimes were equivalent to the ones that he had been charged with, yet their crimes were unpunished. When faced with the evidence of Babi's role in the deportation of the 44 orphans, his defense team asserted that it was a Zionist fabrication. In the face of irrefutable proof of the evidence, the defense team instead insisted it was the fault of those hiding the children in an unsafe location. It was not until the 4th of July 1987 that the protracted legal case was brought to an end with a finding of guilt and a life sentence handed to the 74-year-old Barbie. Held in a prison in Lyon, Barbie died aged 77 from leukemia and cancers of the spine and prostate. Klaus Barbie was but one vicious cog in the Nazi machine. It was through men such as Barbie that hundreds of thousands of people were located, arrested and deported to the concentration camps. Klaus Barbie, however, is an interesting case as he was a well-known example of the sorts of actions Nazis undertook after the war. What is perhaps most shocking was his involvement with the Western powers under the guise of anti-communist activity. Whilst it would be an unfortunate accident to hire a wanted war criminal as an intelligence officer upon learning of his past crimes and wanted status, it would not follow that he be helped to evade justice. Barbie was able to evade justice by integrating himself with some of the more brutal regimes and drug lords of South America. Barbie's crimes are a reminder of the sadistic nature of the Nazi regime, and the men more than willing and able to take joy in the pain and deaths of those they considered lesser.